But first, a third floor council flat in Ipswich is today's destination for a team of extreme cleaners. The last tenant has vacated the property but left her possessions behind. The flat must be cleared out and made ready for a new tenant. Today, that job falls to Barry, Gary, Cedric and Sam. But it's not going to be easy. Oh, Look at the state of this. It's just dog mess everywhere. God, it stinks. That's where you're treading, boys. I hope. Oh, my God. It's everywhere. Look at it. You close my nose. But I can still smell the, you know, uh, the dog food. I'm wondering if they've piled up the dog food and left the dog here, because there's so much... You couldn't really live with this amount of mess around. Oh, watch where you're walking. Bloody everywhere. The abandoned dog has since been rescued, but not before leaving a minefield. They soon get an impression of who was living here. <laughs> it seems this is the story of the princess and the poo. We're buried. So it's what we're going to do. Try. Right. Just real nice. OK, well, the first thing we're going to try and do is clear this gangway, because if we can't get in and out without uh, treading and stuff, then it's going to be a messy old job. It sounds simple enough, but there's a serious risk. Dog feces, if you touch it um, and then touch your eyes or your face, it will actually make you go blind in some cases. Barry is talking about toxocoriasis, a roundworm infection in dogs which can spread to humans, usually children, and can occasionally cause blindness. For Cedric, it's all about texture. A sticky, sticky dog. It tells you how many days the dog has been here. The boots are probably not Jimmy Choo's, but they could be Jimmy Poo's. Nice shoes going out for a meal. Suit you, they're just your size, aren't they? Let me try the walk first. Stroll on, Cedric. Nice. Back in Ipswich, there's a room with a poo. I think what it is, is everything out of the dog's reach was reasonably clean, uh, but everything sort of down below is obviously quite minging and dirty. It smells a lot like a fishing shop, so I wonder if it's, there's a couple of maggots in there somewhere, I don't know. In this game, you never know what might turn up next. Something, something's a bit honking in here. That's what's honking in here, and I'm not going to keep it. It's going to go. There's meat and veg. Some chopped... Oh. Some eggs, chopped tomatoes. I think I'm going to chuck that one out and move on a bit, I think. There's some bread, which is two months old. Whoever was here certainly left in a hurry. And there's washing in the washing machine that's been there for two months. Oh, it's definitely a bit of a sort of damp aroma there. We've got something for you, mate. Cedric is a firm believer in recycling. Oh, uh, right, yes. What size are you on? Slightly bigger than that, I think. Ah. Oh, I might get it on, but I'd never get it off again. Take it in there, mate. Ooh. And he doesn't give up easily. Your what? size? No. More your size, I reckon. Mine are too big. Yeah. Yeah. Cedric seems to keep finding women's underwear, which he has to have a little giggle at before he throws it away. Not the same, but it's a different colour. As Cedric demonstrates yeah. that one size fits all, Sam finds some frozen body parts. Three or four more pigs trotters there. Somewhere there's a pig with no feet. You can tell a lot about a person from their possessions. You know the secret behind this house, man? You know what it is? I'm not sure, but... It looks like um, you put your dog. All right. And, if, and then you make a, a spliff. That's how it looks like. What is mm. this? Maybe, now you say it, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Whatever it is, it's heading for the bin. Bye. The cupboard contents suggest that Cedric's drug theory was on the money. I and mean, also in the kitchen cupboard is some sort of um, pipe box, maybe? I don't know. That's a little bag with nothing in it, but also right next to it was some quite large cigarette papers. What suggests maybe some more drug use in this flat. Finding some holes in the door, Barry comes up with another theory. Well, I, well, looks at this one here. Someone's been punching it. 
It looks about this size. The lads are learning more at every turn. There's plenty of stereos here, and uh, possibly that was part of the problem they had. I mean, you've got a really big stereo system in one flat, and that's going to cause problems for all your neighbours around. The pathway's now cleared. It's time to move everything out, starting with the big stuff. And then there'll be the face wash. Um, once we get everything clear, then it's get the pongo out and have a good mop through. In this weather, Sam and Cedric don't mind the manual labour. Keeping us warm, that's for sure. Good to work, mate. Back in Ipswich, the clean team are into the final furlong of the great clear-out. I think we're doing pretty good. We're getting all around. The sea of dog mess has all been scraped away, and now it's time to swab the deck. He came in this morning, but when he opened the door, oh, horrible, horrible. This is just a disinfecting through the whole flat, make it smell a bit sweeter. Thanks to Barry and his anti-poo potion, it isn't long before the pong has gone. Whoever's gonna come in will have a nice clean house. Excellent, fantastic. Where only this morning there was a stinking mess, there now lies a sparkling home that will soon be ready for a new tenant. Yep, we've um, cleaned everywhere, made it nice and smelly. Ready for a bit of decorating, I think, and a new residence. I'm not used to cold. The contents of the flat have filled two trucks, and now it's off to the dump. 